Hi, I'm Robert Joseph. Today I'm going to teach you how to make this boxer brief. Um, so before we begin, just a couple of things about the video. This is an updated video to the previous older video. The main difference between this one and that one is that you won't have to read along. Um, instead, I'm actually going to be talking you through and narrating the entire video. So we'll go along this journey together. So we will get straight to the tutorial right after the intro. Okay, so we're uh, ready to start cutting things out. Um, before we do that, let's just talk about the pattern really quickly. So this is the body and we're going to cut one of these and we're gonna cut it on the fold. Um, and that's the fold of the fabric. So I'm gonna fold the fabric over and cut it out. And so the back will actually wrap around to the front. And then this here is the uh, front pouch, which we're gonna cut four. And the reason I'm cutting four is because two of them are going to be for the lining on the inside. Now, if you don't want to line it, you need to only cut two um, for the left and the right side of the pouch. Um, however, just understand that you will have a seam um, going up the center front, um, an exposed seam. So I'm gonna cut four of these. Now I have two notches here. These two notches here are uh, triangle notches and they will match. So I have this flipped over, but you'll match those as you sew. So it's important that we notch those out. So um, I'm going to be using this. This is a um, double brushed jersey knit, um, which is pretty standard for underwear, at least a jersey knit now. Um, so I'm going to get ready um, now and cut this out. So this is the part where I usually speed things up. Okay, so now that we've got everything cut, I'm actually going to uh, just move the pattern pieces off the table. And actually we're gonna work with the uh, front pouch first. So I'm just gonna carefully fold up the body and move that off the table. And actually, I think so you can see better, I'm actually going to remove uh, my cutting uh, mat and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I think you could be able to see this uh, better. So we have two pairs of the front pouch. And what we need to do is for each pair, we need to match their face side together. And when I say face side, I mean the printed side. So I don't like to say right side because there is a right and a left side of the garment. And I don't want that to be confusing. So you'll hear, hear me say face side, and that means the face, the printed side of the fabric. So I'm just going to take each one of these, separate them, and then I'm going to match their face sides together, match up those notches, and just make sure everything is aligned up. And be careful um, not to stretch the pieces while you are working with them. So there's one, and then we'll do the same thing to this piece. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're actually just going to stack these right on top of each other. And make sure that this outer curve here is actually all lined up because that's where we're going to sew. And I'm actually going to flip this over because I want to sew from the bottom here. Uh, this will be our inseam seam right here. I want to sew from here all the way up to the waist, which is up here. And I can pin this all together. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin um, about three quarters or an inch away from the edge 
here where we're going to be sewing and the reason I'm doing that is so that I don't actually have to remove my pins as I'm sewing so it'll keep everything together. And I'm using a lot of pins, I guess. You don't have to use this many pins, but I just want you to understand where you're going to be sewing and how you're going to be doing that. And then just make sure that all four layers will be caught in the machine, okay? So we're gonna use the overlock or a serger. Um, it means the same thing. Um, to sew this seam all the way up. Okay, so now that we have uh, the outer seam sewn, what we need to do is we need to turn the face side out. So make sure that your face sides show on actually both sides of your front pouch here. Okay, so I'll try to lay this kind of flat. This is what we should be looking for. And we have the two notches here on the side. And when we kind of open this up where we see our uh, wrong sides matching. Okay. So that we see on both sides of this, we see the face side. Now we're going to be attaching this to the body, which I will grab in just a sec. You need to decide which side of this is going to be on the outside of your um, boxer brief. So if this is uh, what you like, then that would be the outside because we need to know that before we go um, and stitch it to the body. So let me bring the body in. Okay, so this is the body of the garment and let's just kind of fold it out halfway. So if we were going to sew this, what I'm talking about is this would be the outside um, of the front pouch. But if we chose this side, this would be the outside of the pouch. Okay, so you'll just have to decide um, on that. So I actually like the other side, this side, this uh, brighter side. So what I'm going to do is I will actually need to lay out my body so I can see the face side up this way. And what I'm going to do is I'll take this and I can kind of line this up here. This is my notch and this is my notch. And I'm going to flip this so those two sides are matching each other. And then I'm just going to go ahead and pin and I'll kind of put a perpendicular pin just to like hold that on there for right now. And then what I can do is I can match up the edges of my inseams and the edges of my fabric and I'm going to go ahead and put a pin in this. Now because this has a curve we really won't be able to put the pin in too far away from that edge um, and we will have to remove the pins as we sew. You may need to stretch your pouch into that curve at the bottom and I designed it that way so that there it, it actually um, fits in there or cups a little bit and then you will walk the rest of your garment up, excuse me, um, all the way up uh, along this edge. And I'm going to put a pin along that and it should match pretty well. This is fairly straight right here. So we're going to overlock this all the way up to the top from the inseam all the way up. Okay, so we have that first seam of the pouch sewn um, to the body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pouch and I'm going to fold it over so we don't see that seam. And you can see we have a nice seam here on the outside. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the body of the, um, of the garment, of the brief, um, and I've got my other front here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold it over and I'm going to bring it over to cover that pouch and I'm going to match those notches up right here. And then I'll do the same thing. I will match the crotch seam of that or the inseam of that to the inseam of the bottom of that pouch. Let's put a pin in there and then 
like I did the other, I will follow up the edge here of the body up to the top of that pouch. Just put a quick pin there, okay? So let me kind of shake this out a little bit so you can kind of see that. So this is the other front seam with the pouch. And again, I'll turn it over here. You can see the pouch here and I've got everything pinned here. So we'll have to sew on the other side here, but I'm gonna again, sew from that inseam all the way up to the waist. Okay, so now that we have this other uh, side of the pouch sewn onto the body, what I'm gonna do really quickly is I'm gonna turn this face side out for you so you can see um, what everything looks like on the front here, just really quickly. Okay, so this is the front pouch. We've sewn it to both sides of the body. This is the front, and what we're, our next step is actually going to be sewing this inseam that goes around, and so that looks pretty nice. So if you've got to this um, part, um, great. So we're gonna move to the inseam now, but I wanted to just give you a quick preview of what um, it looks like. So we actually need to turn um, it face side to the inside, so we need to see the wrong side. Okay, so now here, this is our inseam on the front, and this is the inseam on the back. So we have a center seam here, which was our front pouch, okay? So we have that established, but we need to find the center of the back inseam. So we'll just fold this in half once more just gently and try not to stretch. And then now that we have this folded in half here at the folded edge, I'm gonna put a pin. Just slide it in, just pin it to that fold. Okay, so now we know where the center is of that. And then, whoops, I folded this over too many times. So, I need to sew the inseam of the front and just make sure that you don't have your front um, um, uh, flipped over and twisted. Make sure it's going to be all nice and flat. And I got this all crazy. Okay, so now we have our front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to match this pouch inseam down here to that pin on the back. And then I can just use that pin and just repin that together. Okay, and then we will just walk our seams up, match our seams at the leg openings, and just match these the edges of your inseam here. And I'm just gonna pin perpendicular because I'm gonna have to remove these pins anyway before I sew. And the same thing on the other side. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're gonna overlock um, from one leg opening all the way over to the other leg opening, and this will be our inseam. Now, um, take care here on where we are going over the pouch seams. You actually want to keep these flat away from each other. Um, otherwise, if the, you'll have one going like this and the other might be flat, and that won't be comfortable to wear. Um, now, if you wanted to, before you moved on to this, I could have mentioned that you could have top stitched that seam down so you won't have to worry about it when you sew over it here. Um, that is an option. But for right now, we're, when we sew over this, I'll just stop here and I'll just gently um, flatten this area here out, the seam down, so it's all staying flat um, going this way. Okay, so let's go over to the overlock and get this inseam sewn.
Okay, so now that we've got our inseam sewn, we've got our pouch on, our inseam sewn, and we actually have um, pretty much a garment here. So I could have done this next step at the overlock um, instead of coming back to the table, but it is kind of an option. So I'm gonna go back over to the overlock and I'm just going to clean finish the leg opening here on the edge, and that's gonna be before we actually turn up the edge. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that before we move on to the elastic waist, um, because then once we get the elastic waist on, then we'll actually have a finished garment here. So I'm just gonna do that really quick. And when I do that, I'm gonna make sure that this inseam is folding toward the back on both sides, okay? Okay, so now that we have the leg openings overlocked, we actually need to just hem them up. And we are going to turn this up a half inch, right? Grab your ruler and just double check. And after you've done uh, half inch hems a lot, you will just begin to be able to eye it. And I'm just going to put the pins in like this and there is a slight curve and you will need to actually stretch and it's actually a good thing for you to stretch because what that will do is actually um, increase uh, the uh, stretch for when you actually get into it. So it's okay to be stretching your knits when you're actually hemming them. And we'll just turn this up all the way around. About the stretch, just one note about the stretch, you're stretching it to match into the curve, um, but you're not stretching it a lot. You're just stretching it that little bit amount that you need to create that curve. Because the, the edge here of the hem is actually a little bit smaller than the area that you're folding it into. So that's what I me mean by cur uh, stretching it to create that curve. Okay, so um, I'm going to get the other side pinned up and then we will actually just go into the sewing machine and I'm going to use a regular sewing machine and we're going to use a zigzag to go across um, the overlocking here. So the needle, let me grab a pin, the needle what I'm going to attempt to do is the needle will actually go in here right on the edge here of that hem and then the needle will come back over here and then so on and will it will hold on to that hem instead of having some kind, kind of lip happening okay so I'm gonna set my zigzag at four and a half wide and three long Okay, so now that we have the hem all done, we're ready to prepare the elastic waistband. Okay, so we're ready to prepare the elastic, and I like to use this sport elastic. It's one and a quarter inch wide, and that's actually how I build the patterns, to use one and a quarter inch wide elastic. So you can use any kind of elastic that you would like. You could probably go up to one and a half inch wide elastic if you would like if you can't find the one and a quarter inch um, the one and a half inch wide elastic won't really affect a lot of the sizing of the garment so the reason i like this is because it has a really soft um, a feel to it and hand to it um, so it doesn't actually restrict your waist a lot so that's why I like this elastic but again you can actually use any kind of waistband style elastic that you prefer so be sure that you reference the uh, cut amounts which are printed directly on one of the pages of the pattern so know that these amounts match actually pretty close to the actual size of the garment itself 
these measurements have the seam allowances included so the finished ring that you're going to be making for the waistband will actually be a little bit smaller than these measurements which is actually um, how it's supposed to be so understand that if you need to adjust the measurement of the elastic you should really only be um, making it smaller you can't really have an elastic ring that is actually larger than the garment that you're making if you need the elastic to be larger then you should actually go up a size in the garment that you're making so i'm going to get this ready so i'm actually making a medium so i'm just going to measure out the 32 inches that i need and cut and like i said before the seam allowances are included Okay, so um, now there is kind of a face side and a wrong side to this. So the face side is also known as the right side, but I say face side because um, there's also a right and a left of the garment. So I don't want you to get confused. So the face side of this is actually the side that has the more ridgy feel to it. And the wrong side has a flatter feel. It's just a slight, slight subtle difference. So I'm going to match each of the cut ends, face sides together. And then I'm going to go ahead and just pin this together and then I'm going to actually sew this together with a straight stitch uh, a half inch seam allowance so I'm just going to go ahead and mark that I don't usually mark it when I'm making stuff for myself but I want you to see where I'm going to be stitching again a straight stitch and you can use uh, a regular stitch length okay so I've marked that and let me go ahead and pin this because I want to walk you through what I'm going to do uh, while I'm in the machine. Um, so what you're going to do after you sew that stitch line, you will press the seam allowance open. And I like to do, to hold this down, to hold each of these seam allowances down, I like to run a little zigzag stitch just covering up the cut edge um, back and forth. And you'll see me do that in the machine. So I'm going to run over to the machine and do that really quick. Okay, so now that our ring is successfully um, sewn together, we actually just need to divide this into fourths, so equal fourths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in half at that seam, just fold it straight in half, and on the opposite end of the fold, I'm going to put a pin here. And then I'm going to take that pin and I'm going to match that up to the seam. So that's there. And now on each of the ends in those folds, I'm going to put a pin. So I'll put a pin at this fold. And then I'm going to put a pin on this fold. And so now our ring is, to divi is divided into four equal parts. And now it's ready to be applied to the garment. Okay, so now that we've got the uh, elastic all uh, ready, um, I've actually decided not to use this elastic waistband because I'm running low on this elastic. So I'm actually going to use uh, some of my branded elastic that I have tons of leftover um, from my underwear line. Um, this is like over 10 years old. And I actually, I know I'm going to get people asking me where I got it made. I had it made in China and this is a sublimation on this elastic it's really um, soft um, but i don't remember who what company it was that i bought this from i did my sourcing you know a very long time ago and i don't have my underwear company anymore so you'll just need to do your own sourcing and use google um, search to do that just look for um, elastic makers or waistband elastic makers um, and you you can find out how to get your own elastic made. Um, but I don't do that kind of stuff anymore.
So, okay, I've actually done this, uh, done it exactly almost the same way, um, and I've uh, divided it into four equal parts, and now I actually need to divide the waistband on the uh, boxer brief into four equal parts. The only seam we have, seams we have are here on the front pouch. There's no uh, center back seam, and I actually didn't put any notches uh, for you to match, so we'll just do that really quickly on our own. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold here on that center seam, that seam of the two pouches and very gently fold that waistband matching the edges very carefully and trying not to stretch just fold this gently in half okay and here is the half of that let me do this one more time matching everything just very gently and then this folded edge up here is where we're going to put a pin just right in that little fold. And then we will match that pin up here to the center front seam. And then gently just walk those cut edges up and on either side in that fold, that's where we'll put the pin. And then just follow the same thing for the other side. Okay, so now we've got our garment waist um, divided into fourths. I'm gonna fold. I'm gonna uh, flip this over to the back side because we're gonna first start to pin here on the back. So I've got my elastic here, and I've got the seam in the back, and I'm just gonna match that seam up just to the center back. And I'm gonna actually just use. No, I think I'm gonna keep those pins there. I'll grab a new pin, and at the bottom of the elastic is actually where I want to be pinning, because the bottom of the elastic is where we're gonna be stitching. And then just follow the pins around that, and we're matching, I forgot to, but we're matching the top of the elastic to the top edge of the, the garment. And then I'll just take another pin we can remove, we'll be removing a lot of these pins as we go. And I think I'm actually pinning in the wrong direction, and I'll show you that in just a second. So here's the center front and then the pin for the front. And I'll take another pin and just pin here at the bottom. And follow this around one more time. Match that other pin, trying not to um, stretch the garment body. Okay, so everything is pinned, and I like to do uh, double pins, but um, as I mentioned, I said that I may need to repin the direction, so I'm going to actually put this in the machine going. You can't really see this until in the um, camera, but let me see if I switch this around here. If I'm sewing this way, um, I won't be able to pull the pins Actually, if it's going this way, this is the way I'm going to be sewing. So I'm going to be sewing this way, so I won't be able to pull the pins out. So I just need to change direction. And while I'm doing that, um, I also like to do two pins. So this one, I'm going to switch this direction of this pin. And then I'm going to take this other pin, and I'm going to pin the top of that elastic. So it keeps the rest of the garment above my stitching from moving around. So I'm just going to do that here really quickly as well. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to start sewing um, at the center back. And I'm going to start before this seam. So once I get into the machine, you'll actually see me do that. And I'm kind of go trying to go fast here. to get this all pinned so I can come. I've got everything pinned now. So um, on the center back, so I'm going to start probably about an inch before this center back seam because that's going to be kind of heavy and I want to make, kind of want to get a head start on that stitching over that. And then when I come back here, I'm going to actually stitch past that over my original stitching for about an inch and end about here. So that way we won't have any messy back stitching. Okay, so uh, the sewing machine I usually speed up a little bit um, and I don't actually narrate over that stitching. So that's why I wanted to just kind of let you know how I'm going to start stitching this. And again, just one more note on that. 
my uh, stitch length for the hem, I'm keeping it the same. So it was four and a half wide and three long. Okay, so we have our elastic on there. And one thing I probably should have mentioned before, and I apologize for that, um, as I was sewing on the elastic, I was actually stretching front to back slightly, just slightly, um, stretching um, uh, both the garment and the elastic together and helping it through the machine. And I wasn't sewing really, really fast, even though I sped that section up. Um, I'm slow, I'm speed, I'm speedy. I'm sewing at about a moderate, um, medium speed um, and that the reason for that is because the faster you sew the more chances you have on skipping stitches and I'll be honest with you I skipped a little stitch here and I may well go back over this part just so um, that looks nice um, but um, so put this together and sew this together with like a medium speed on your machine and then give it a slight stretch and help it through the machine as you go and what that does is that that slight stretch helps it when you put this on your body, you're going to be really stretching it to get it over your body and then it will want to come back. And if those zigzag stitches are too short, um, what will happen is um, they will actually bust, they will break. So by stretching it gives you a little bit more assur assurance that your, stri their, your stitches are long enough to get through all of that stretch that you need. Okay, so there's one last step that I like to do and you don't have to do it, um, but that's the way that I built this pattern. I'm going to flip this um, inside out really quick. And now that we've sewn this on, we have this extra fabric here and I'm just going to cut that all off. So be careful um, not to cut your actual elastic or any other part of your garment. Okay, and there is the finished boxer brief. There's the front and there's the back. And we are all completed. Now, once you uh, get going with these and you're comfortable with the sewing, it'll really only take you maybe, once you get everything cut out, maybe 20 or 30 minutes to put this whole thing together once you've done it a few times. So um, congratulations. And let's have a look at this on the uh, mannequin.